five tips to selling an inherited house. Hey guys, this is Brad from GeorgiaProbateResource.com and ArborViewHomeBuyers.com. We're a real estate solutions company in Georgia and we specialize in the probate and inheritance niche. And over the years we've become experts in buying houses through probate and inheritance. So I wanted to make this video here because these are kind of five things that I would say are probably the most common hurdles that we've dealt with over the years when purchasing properties. Uh, number one is uh, you want to make sure that you have all of your documents in order. Um, and everyone's documents are going to be different, but most of the time, if you're going to sell the house, you've got to have your letters of administration or your letters testamentary. Um, and that is obtained through the probate process. Uh, in most cases, there are some exceptions to probate, but I'm not going to get into those in this video because 95 5% of the time we're going to be dealing with either a, an administration or uh, you're going to have a will and there's going to be an executor. So you need to make sure you have that letter in your hand in order to sell that property. You can sell the property as soon as you get those documents. So you're going to want to uh, make sure you have that and then within that document it's going to grant you the power or the authority to sell assets on behalf of the estate. So make sure you have all your paperwork in order. If you haven't started probate yet, I've got other videos on what other documents you need, go check that out. But um, tip number two, um, you need to have a heart to heart with the heirs or your siblings or whomever the heirs of the estate are. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you guys need to set expectations as to what's gonna happen out of this estate, especially with a home sale, and you need to make sure that everyone is on the same page. I can't tell you how many times we have done uh, a deal where we've, we've run into the situation where the, um, the sellers don't agree on the price, and, you, and it's usually like one sibling who has unrealistic expectations of what this property is worth and thinks this thing's worth a million bucks and you got two other siblings who are ready to sell today and, and know what the property's worth and there's, they, you know, let's say it's $200,000 and you got this other sibling over here who thinks it's worth $500,000 and that sibling over there holds up the sale because they refuse to cooperate because for some reason they're delusional about what this property is worth and no one can come to agreement. And, and what happens in that scenario is until you guys come to an agreement, um, it's either gonna string out to the point where you're going to have to go to court and fight over it. And believe me, you don't want a judge to tell you what to do, but sometimes it gets to that point. So it would be in your best interest to lay your egos aside and, and just set your expectations aside and, and just come to an agreement as to how you're gonna sell this property because if you don't, it's gonna drag out for a long time and it's gonna be more painful. So make sure that you set expectations uh, around that. Uh, so third point, um, you need to have a backup plan. What if the house doesn't sell for what you thought it would sell for? Because things change. As I'm making this video right now in November of 2022, just in the last three months, the real estate market has changed significantly. Um, we've seen about a 10% decline in prices here just in three months. It's like someone's just pumped the brakes. So you need to make sure that you have a backup plan. What are you gonna do with this property if it doesn't sell for what you thought it was gonna sell for? Are you prepared to sell it for less? Are you prepared to keep the property and rent it out to somebody? What is your backup plan? And just have that backup plan in your back pocket. That's what backup plans are for, right? And if you've got that backup plan in your back pocket, then if something does come to, to light, then you're prepared for it. So make sure that you got a backup plan. Uh, number four, get the house ready to sell. Mow the grass. If you're gonna list it with a real estate agent and list it out on the market, especially now that the market's changed, like in the last two years when the real estate market was hot, you could pretty much sell anything right on the market and you didn't have to do anything to the property and there was such low inventory that anyone would buy it and pay whatever you're asking for it because that's all they could get. Well, those times have changed. The real estate market has changed and now buyers are being a lot pickier than they used to be. 
So we're having to, you know, do better renovation jobs and not just sort of carpet and paint like we were doing. We're having to make sure we're going a little bit further uh, in our rehabs. So you need to do the same if you're going to list the house with a real estate agent. And oh, by the way, I'm a licensed agent in the state of Georgia with One Source Realty. And again, we're a real estate solutions company. If you'd like us to list the house for you, we'd be more than happy to help you with that. Or you can sell it to us quick for a quick fast cash offer over here. So um, make sure you have the house ready. Make sure that you clean all the stuff out of the house. Um, most buyers are not going to want your stuff. You're not, they're not going to want your mom's junk. I know some people think it's worth money, but you know, it's in the eye of the beholder or whatever, as they say, right? So you need to make sure you clear the stuff out because people want the house. They don't want the stuff in the house. They want the house. So you need to not, you need to take their eyes off of the stuff so that they can focus on the house. Okay. So you need to clean up the yard. You need to, uh, you know, if it's got really grungy paint or this or that, and it needs repairs, um, you need to make sure you're doing some repairs. You're fixing the life and safety issues for the most part. There are life and safety issues. And um, if you know about you know, major defects that aren't obvious, don't try to hide those because it'll come back to bite you later if you don't disclose those things. Um, and, and, and if you are trying to sell it as a fixer upper on the market, you got to make sure you price the house appropriately. You cannot price your house that needs a lot of work the same as the neighbor down the street who was completely updated and everything was fixed up. That's apples to oranges there. You can't, set, you can't sell it for the price that they sold for because their house is in better condition. Someone put thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 into that house down the street to make it in better condition. That's why it sold for more money. So you have to make sure that you're pricing the property right. If you price it right, it will sell. But if you price it wrong and you throw it out in the market and it's sitting for three, four, or five weeks and you've had crickets on it, you're probably overpriced. Because right now in this market we're in, people are um, paying attention to price more than anything. So make sure that you're getting the house ready. And then also while you're selling it, make sure you keep it maintained. Make sure you're mowing the grass. Make sure you're, you're cleaning up. Make sure you're checking on the house once or twice a week because as you're doing showings and stuff like that and people are going through the house, um, they're going to track dirt in the house and they're going to bring leaves in. You'd be surprised at the things that happen to a house while it's on the market. Trust me, I have sold hundreds of houses and uh, you know houses that we've flipped and, and listed houses and I've been in this business for a number of years. Nothing surprises me anymore. So, so make sure you're doing that. Now, if you want to skip steps four and five, which was get the house ready and keep it maintained during the sale, you can just sell the house to an investor. And that's where we come in. Um, like I said, we can list it for you if you want, or we can, I can just buy it for cash at Arbor View Properties. We've been buying houses for cash for years. We've been buying houses from estates for years. That's become our specialty. Um, you can skip cleaning the stuff out. You can sell it to us with all the junk in it that you don't want. We'll buy it with all the junk in it. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to paint anything. You don't have to mow the grass. You don't have to do anything to the house and we'll make it a fast and easy sale. If you've got all your paperwork in order, like I said in tip number one, we can generally do this pretty quickly. We're buying it as is. You don't have to fix anything. You don't have to clean anything. You don't have to take anything out. You don't have to do junk removal. We'll buy it completely as is. So I hope this video helped you. Thanks again. I'm Brad with georgiaprobateresource.com. I really appreciate it. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.